Hello, everybody, and welcome to Across the Obelisk. Now, this game is very underrated, in my opinion. This is probably hands down my favorite card game. It's a, a roguelike deck building card game where you play as four different characters and you go through and you have a big adventure. Woo. But uh, this game is so much fun. I love the hell out of it. And I, you know, I've unlocked almost everything. And I do have around 130 hours in the game, I want to say. And I would not consider myself an expert. There's still so much I don't know about this game. I also have, you know, all the characters and everything. Have them all. I'm max rank on a lot of them. Well, not a lot of them. Two of them. Because I always get up playing tank and healer when I'm playing with my friends. But that's the thing that makes this game so fucking good is that it's four person co-op. So you can each each person can play a different character and you'll all have different roles and everything. And it is so much fun. Me and my friends have not stopped playing this game since it came out. And I love the hell out of it. So today I thought, why don't I just, you know, do a new profile where, you know, I don't have anything and just do like a, a uh, you know, a little a little fresh run for y'all. Kind of, I want people to play this game because it's so good, uh, but it's super overwhelming at first. And this Tome of Knowledge, they have a glossary here that explains literally everything to you. And it is so, so good. But I'm going to be taking it slow. I'm going to be, I can usually like rush through. I think the fastest game I've had don't, doing a full game, probably around three hours or so. And that was just me just clicking on everything. So this is going to be a... I, I want to at least play a whole game. I'm probably not <laughs> because the game's very hard with unranked nobodies. But let's jump in. It all started on the princess's 16th birthday. When suddenly a burst of energy erupted from the princess's chamber and swept through the kingdom of Synenthia. The royal guards explored every corner of the castle but found no sign of her, or Lord Hanshek, the court magician. The king sent soldiers all over the kingdom, but none of them returned. The trail of the princess was lost deep in the old forest, near the ancient obelisk that had been dormant for centuries. Desperate the king proclaimed a royal decree, announcing a reward for whoever brought the princess home safely. The news spread quickly throughout the kingdom. Many groups of adventurers prepared to investigate the obelisk. This is the story of one of those groups. So a very simple story, nothing Nothing amazing, if I'm honest, but it's the gameplay where it really shines. So this is the map. This is like the, the full map. Uh, basically, you'll you'll recognize this if you played Slay the Spire or any any other deck building roguelike. It's totally fine. But uh, we got the town here. We got fights. We got events. Then we got uh, special map transitions, special events, and then we've got characters. We can do their quests to unlock them. And we got the boss over here. But right now we're forced to go to the first town. Oh my God. I haven't seen the first town in so long. Right here you can, uh, you can buy cards with the shards. And I'll show you later, but they have a really, really neat system of, uh, meta progression but i think i think everyone's good here i might 
take another smite, holy smite here from my, uh, my healer. And then, then the, sorry. And then in the, uh, the church here, this is where you can remove cards, but it costs money. Let's see if I just have 30, but you have to have a minimum of 15 cards. And I know this is super overwhelming for anyone who's never played this, but it's, oh, it's so good. So we have, you know, everybody has a minimum of 15 cards that they can get. Here we have the altar, which uh, you can, every card has two upgrade paths that you can, you, you can use crystals to buy those upgrade paths. And like, this one makes it more damage, but this one makes it apply burn, which um, is a DOT. But uh, the only ones you can't upgrade are your class specific uh, cards. So every everyone has a class specific card here that upgrades when you level up outside. That's like a meta progression thing where you level up outside of the game after all your runs. Or I th I believe you can probably get these on certain events. I'm not sure about that. But we also have the, uh, the cart here where if you pay money, you can basically just get a get random cards and then you can choose what you want from them. And then the armory where you can buy items for each character. They each have their own starting item. This gives plus one speed. This gives someone inspire where they draw an extra card on the next turn. He heals everybody after the battle. But yeah, you can you can do a ton of shit with this. I'm always rerolling the shop. We also have the town upgrades. You can upgrade the whole town and these little supply boxes, you get them from beating bosses and like uh, completing certain events and stuff. And you can spend those boxes on upgrading the church, the altar, everything else, right? And the global has some really cool stuff. So once you max all this out, then you unlock the ability to just sell these for gold, which is phenomenal. It, it, like after you unlock everything on here, they're not useless. <laughs> I love that. So one of the things that I really love about this game is that it's really easy to make some broken ass builds. And I love the shit. Like everybody wants balance and challenge and I get that, but there's just something satisfying about just absolutely destroying people. <laughs> uh, but that ain't happening today. Not with this group, not with this crew. Okay, so first thing I want to do is get this boy. His name's Heiner. So we got to go here. I'm going to go through this way, so we need to go up. And our first fight, yay, the little corn cuties. So uh, everybody has a set speed. Let me look at their character sheet. Everybody has their, you know, health, speed, energy cards they draw. And then, of course, all the numbers and bullshit, right? But he has 19 speed, but he also has one stack of fast on him, so he gains two speed. So that's why he's going first in the initiative order up here. And then Magnus is next, then Evelyn, and then all the bad guys, and then the healer. <laughs> Which is good, because I have nothing to heal right now, so. Uh, let's see here. Aim shot does 14 damage. It does uh, 14, I think that's piercing damage. And then this is slashing damage. And then each one of these guys has their own resistances and all this shit. But if you just hover over the card, it tells you exactly how much damage you're going to be doing on that. On that. So I'm definitely going to deflect because that draws a card and gains four block. Blocks just, it just blocks damage, of course. But the thing about block in this game is that you lose it at the end of every round. And you also have 
uh, kind of a speed running thing where uh, you get better, you get more gold, more experience and better cards uh, the faster you beat them, right? And not not fast as in <laughs> time, fast as in rounds. So these, this card does nine damage, but it only hits the front monster and it costs one energy. And then down here, we have our energy. So I have four energy and then the green is what I'm getting next turn. So I'm getting three energy next turn. These guys are also gonna start with four on the start of their turn. So who am I? I think I'm just gonna focus the front guy for now. And then this is one of my uh, good, good cards. It's basically you get two energy now, but then you uh, gain one less energy afterwards on your next turn, which I think is fine because I want him gone. Now it's Magnus turn. Magnus is the tank. He can. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to play this because this slows everyone down and applies vulnerable, which just makes their all their resistances in the upper left. You can see it'll just see he's pretty much tens across the board. And then I do this and now he's negative 15 on blunt and cold. Yeah, that's a really, really good card. Uh, these fast strikes the defend. I will defend myself and then I will put this on the healer. Oh, that's so little. <laughs> oh, playing with all these small numbers is hilarious to me. But then I'm just gonna just hat at him. And then the cool thing about energy in this game is that it carries over from round to round. Ooh, manage him. Get two now. Excellent. Evelyn's the mage, so she has a lot of elemental attacks, but she also has, uh, she can give energy to people. So say if I do this on the healer, that green will go up by two, and then he'll draw another card on his turn. And then I'm also gonna give this one to him because he lost it when we used that adrenaline. Hmm, let's see. So I can play all these and there's no really point in there are like certain times where you're like you have to sit and think about what order to play the cards. Man, it's so it's so hard when you're just going fast and eating cards with people. So that should kill him. And then let's see if Reggie can finish it off. Absolutely he can. So Reginald is my favorite character just because I love playing healers in games. I know I'm a weirdo, but whenever I'm playing with my friends, I'm always playing the healer and the tank, which is fine with me. Um, but the healer I found out can put out massive damage because of this bless. So bless basically adds one damage and it adds uh, one heal received. So if I do this, I'm doing 12 damage. Oh, OK, OK. I was just like, ah, oh, I should be doing more. But his resistant, he's very resistant to holy. That makes sense. So. I keep pumping that. He also has like these cards that do barrier and stuff, but I don't I really don't play him like that. I usually just go straight healer and then let the tank put shield on everyone. But I might as well because she doesn't have any. So we shouldn't be taking any damage this turn, but all of our stuff's gone. I forgot to mention there was that card I just played gave block on the next turn as well. So uh, expert tracker, grant someone an extra card and then look at their five top cards and discard any of them. So I want to do that for Evelyn. So these are the cards she's going to draw next turn. 
and we can throw away any that we don't want. Like these elemental or wards, I don't really need those because um, that little symbol right there, the insulate, it basically ups uh, elemental resistances. But these guys don't do elemental damage, really. So there's no real point in having that. Cool. And now she'll draw another card. I can play this and draw a card for myself. And then I can do this and kill him, even though it'll apply bleed and slow. But we got great. So this is basically the after every fight, you get this screen and you can pick one of three cards. Ooh, I'll take steel skin for him or you can just take shards instead. So the purple. So if you right click on a card, it'll tell you exactly what their upgrade paths are. The blue or the orange, but the purple is corrupted. And basically it's like the best version of that card, essentially. It's so good. So I'm definitely taking sprint, draw a card, display uh, slow and then gain two speed for him. It's a bit pricey, so I am going to take the shards on him. Hmm. Ignite anyone for 10 feels equal to your discard pile. OK, interesting. Applies dark. Dark is a very, very interesting concept, but I'm not covering that right now. <laughs> then we have, you know, bleed and poison. I think I'm just going to take the shards because honestly, you don't want to bloat your deck to where you're not pulling the cards that you want. I'm going to go down here. The Baker's son. When you get to the center of the farm, a man dressed as a baker comes out of the mill and greets you. Hello, adventurers. By any chance, does your path take you to the old forest? My son is missing. He likes to play in the forest art, but he did not return yesterday. I would be very grateful if you could go and look for him. You can have these coins in advance. The baker seems very desperate. Maybe you can get something more out of him. Okay, okay, okay. So we could extort him, we could decline his offer, we can accept it. Take the gold and agree to find his son. We can refuse the gold and tell him <laughs> you're not going in that direction. Or ask for more gold, telling him that your group is too good for the mission. Now these ones that have a uh, percentage chance, it tells you exactly the probability of success. But basically this group, Everyone in your group will draw a card and then the energy cost on that card combined has to be five or higher in order for you to pass the check. I think right now we're just going to take the little gold he gives us and agree to find his son. The hopeful baker thanks the group and gives you a small sack of gold, 240 coins. And then look at that, the forest arch. So we could actually do that on our way because we're going for him. We'll go to the forest ruins. We could go down, get the get his son, see what happens. OK, next we got this fight. Now, corruption. These can be so fucking brutal. <laughs> I love them so much. So basically, this is the thing that's going to buff these guys. All monsters gain two holy damage, gain holy resistance. And at the start of combat, all heroes suffer seven sanctify. Now, sanctify is basically when they hit us, they'll get healed for as many sanctify charges are on us. So if we have seven, they hit us, they'll heal for seven. And I'm sure they can put more on us. Uh, but you get to choose one of two rewards. So Andrian, who's the uh, the rogue, is going to get camouflage. So this is going to basically give him two stealth and two sharp, which upgrades his uh, damage a bunch and it draws a card. This also has innate right here. So you're always going to pull that first. That's always going to be in your first hand. 
and then vanish, which means that once it's played, it's out of combat. Um, the this seems pretty rough to me. Like, I mean, it seems easy if I had my crew, which I don't have. So we're not going to risk it right now, but that, oh, that card's so good. Should I risk it? I'll risk it. Surely they can't kill us all. So first things first, we're going to sprint so we can draw a card and get even faster. Hunter's Mark. So it prevents stealth. So if so an enemy can go stealth, then they have to have enough stealth charges to overcome the mark charges. They basically cancel each other out. But uh, it's plus one damage taken per charge. So if I put this on the front guy. Yeah. So now he takes three extra damage. And then let's see. I can give this to him so that he draws another card. I don't want these fast strikes because I want some armor. But I will take the rend for the bleed. And then after that, I think I will do this just to put more damage into this front guy here. <clears throat> And then end our turn with one AP. So, okay, perfect. I got a ton of ton of defense cards. So this one barricade, I love it because it's all heroes. So everyone gets nine. That's super good. I will rend this guy. And that's pretty much all I can do. I will buff up myself because usually the front guy gets hit the most then probably the last guy and then the two in between so Evelyn so also they're playing a ton of cards <laughs> they have their cards up here and there's a uh, there's an ability called sight let me see here so sight so basically, it's a debuff you can put on the enemy and you can reveal their cards to see what move they're going to make because they don't they don't telegraph all the time. Basically, you have to put that on them to telegraph. Well, that is unfortunate because the water gives them more lightning damage taken, but it prevents prevents burn. But I don't think it prevents actual fire damage. So I think we're actually okay on that. This one I do want to do just because it'll give me one energy next turn. And they're all wet, so they're taking more from lightning. So the lightning spark, basically it's going to do whatever this number is, the charges, it's going to do that to the side enemies at the start of his turn. So you kind of want to put this on the middle guys so that it's spreading it out more evenly. But I really am focusing this front guy here. And then we're just going to fireball his ass. And then I guess we might as well play this on someone. I think I'm going to play it on Reggie. Just because it's going to give him six block next turn. And he's uh, more resistant now. Let's see. So Bless is, is the one that I love the most because it's every time you do it, you just get stronger. So eight. And then I'll give that to him. And you kind of you kind of pick up the pace and you can go and go and go. Uh, once you know what you're looking for and what you're what you're doing. So, OK. So let me mention this. He's got a skull on his health bar, that means he dies next turn. So basically, if it, if the aura around the circle or around the skull is red, then he'll die at the beginning of his turn. If it's green, then he will die at the end of his turn. 
which means he will play his cards and then he'll die. There's benefits to both, really. <laughs> but uh, but if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly how he's dying. So he's taking seven bleed damage at the start of his turn, and he also has six health, so he, he dies. It could get more complicated than that, but that's just the general gist of it. Bleed, of course, is standard, standard bleed shit. So we're gonna draw a card. Oh, I'm gonna draw a card again. So there's no real point to, well, I have three. So I could just kill him now. He's gonna die at the end of his turn, but all my cards are front monster cards. So if I do this and I just get rid of them, I can start in on someone else. And I wanna play this one because that's gonna slow him down and put Reggie in front of him. And then you can hover right here to see that card again, the corruption card. Yep. So we're gonna rend, because that's two. We are going to defend ourselves. And then we're going to put that on Evelyn, because she doesn't have any. Okay, they're making me bleed too. Cool. So these cards are really strong because you basically can just give people energy. Um, hmm. And I think these, yeah, you can downgrade this to where it only costs one or you can give two energy to someone. Basically just a net energy. I think. So I have six. I should be able to just kill this front guy. 100%. And then from there, I think I'm going to give this to Reggie and end my turn. Ah, so here's the... Reggie does have a sight card. So let me put that on him. So next turn, we're gonna when he draws his cards, we're going to be able to see his cards. Let's do that so we get more bless down here. I'm going to do that again. The healing rain's pretty cool. The regen, basically every charge of this you have, it, you know, you heal on the start of your next turn. And then the water. Let's see, do I want to do this? I think I'm going to hold off because they're going to lose that immediately. Basically, I'm just putting, well, yeah, I could put seven on for next round, but then hold on to the one AP. So now it's his turn again. And I could do this to make him bleed. I like that. Oh, just barely. Okay. He has uh, this enrage card. So draw a card and then gain two energy for one energy. Pretty good. This one. Oh, and here in the top, this is going to show what he's going to do. Now that he has the sight, it would show up to three cards that he drew. So he's going to do seven damage to a random hero. He's going to do that two more times. So he's doing it three times in total. And then he's applying applying water to all of us, too. Uh, So I, I think I'm just going to play all these. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just touch him up a bit, and then uh, I think I'm going to put this on Reggie. She has this mana gem that's super good. It's totally free. You can only do it once, though, but it's just too free energy. Oh, I should have done this first. So Cold Spark is her kind of class ability, and it does all this damage. It does damage and status equal to your half of your hand. So it would only do two of each. But uh, but the chill. So the more stacks of chill you have on someone, it lowers their resistance to it, but then also it lowers their speed. So it makes them super slow. But let's uh let's get more energy for next turn. 
And then this I will put on you. Okay, and then this is um, Reggie's class card. He can dispel one, and uh, basically when, when you're dispelling, it'll say dispel one, and then it'll do it from left to right, whatever the leftmost uh, curse is. And so if I had to dispel two, I would be able to move the bleed off him too. Let's see, do I want to do that? Not really. I kind of want to do this to get more bless. And then I think I'm just going to touch him up some more. He's only got eight health left. Okay. So if I do that, can I kill him? No. Yes. No. I'm an idiot. Let's see here. Brandon, he's dead. So now he got this camouflage card, which is going to be super good. Toxic Rain's pretty good because it uh, just poisons all of them, all monsters. Helping Hand is actually really good for him because that's just a free card that he can give someone a new card, like give him a drawing card. Uh, for Reggie, I'm not going to take any of these, so I'm going to take the shards. Scroll of Speed. That's an interesting choice. I think I... Yeah, I think I will take the Scroll of Speed, and... I really don't want to take Toxic Rain, because there is another character that is more proficient in poison. Whereas he is very much a bleed character. Bleed and mark. The new recruits. You have reached a crossroads. To the north, the path leads you to an old watchtower. To the south, the path leads you to bridges that cross the river. The northern path appears to be blocked by a pig man with a brand on his arm who is trying to recruit others for what appears to be a cult. If you want to go north, you'll have to deal with them. How would you like to proceed? Well, we could leave and just go only have the option to go south, which is not what we want. We want to go north. We can just start combat and attack them. We can threaten them to leave, which is 45% chance. Or Magnus, depending on what characters you're bringing, they can have special their own special things. I will scare them by pretending to be a savage werewolf which is 36, because he has to pull a melee attack card. Um, I'm just going to fight him. <laughs> you approach him quickly and catch them off guard. The marked pig summons a fire imp, and the fight starts. Okay, okay. So, sprint first, because I just get a card. Now, Camouflage has, gives me Stealth. Stealth is super cool, because basically for every charge of Stealth, it gives me 20% more damage or more healing, but it doesn't stack. And it, um, whenever you play a card, you lose it, like you come out of Stealth. And you also, uh, it goes, it one charge removed uh, at the start of a turn. So I'm going to play this. So he's invisible. So basically none of these creatures can target him with cards. Uh, so he's doing 40% more damage, plus this uh, sharp that it applies as well, which is plus two uh, to slashing and piercing damage, which is all he does. This is slashing this piercing. So I'm going to. Mm. Who? It, it, the imp would take the most damage. And then just throw these. I will play this and then I will hit the imp again. 
Magnus's turn. He's very much a, a front monster hitter. So I think I will guard. I will guard again. And I will give this to Reggie. And I will smack him. Okay, so she's taking fire damage now. So the difference between bleed and fire damage is that... F Excuse me. Fire damage can be blocked at the start of your turn. So as long as you have block on them, they're fine. I actually want to give, oh no. So the thing about uh, speed is that it also does not stack. So basically, uh, it'll only go up to the highest number. So putting this on him wouldn't give, or her wouldn't give him three stacks. It would give him two stacks because it would just go up to the highest number. I didn't realize I really was so fast already. Um, he's already gone. So I think I will just put this on myself. Make myself faster there. Because everybody else is as fast as they can be. I should have done this again. <laughs> but I have four. And I can play all my cards. Well. Yeah. That'll kill him get him out of the initiative so this right here i want to put here so that that two damage will be applied to him and him and then i might as well start working on the front guy and you can hover over him and it highlights it at the top which character goes where so this i want to see what he's playing He's going to be torching. Random hero, deal three damage, apply five fire. Okay. So I want to actually give that to her so that she doesn't take that fire damage. And I want to heal the tank and then do damage to her. Okay, let's see here. Expert tracker. I will give that to Evelyn because I do not need that. I do not need that. How many, how much energy am I going to have? Four, five. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. I want to do more damage with her right now. So let's deflect to draw a card. We can make him bleed. Yeah, that would be the best bet in my turn. So we can slow them all down. That's super good. We can get, we can draw a card and get energy. I can put this on everyone. He's taking 10 fire damage. So we want to put that on him for sure. And then 16 is enough armor, I believe. So, okay, let's think about this. So he's going to be doing 16 damage or 14 damage to someone and applying three burn. Oof. Um, so if I do these three cards, I can kill the front guy. Or actually, no, he's going to he's going to die at the start of his turn, so I, I don't need to attack him anymore. So I'm going to start in on the second. Turn. And then I will give this to Reggie just to give him more energy. Oh, motherfucker. OK, he healed him for the amount of bleed he was doing. So now Reggie has to focus him. But Reggie's all good. And then I will do this to douse any fire. Oh, that's right, I forgot. You can pet Magnus. You just... Stop it. I have a reputation. 
That's hilarious. But this will give it... See, that's the, the downside of that card, is that it also puts out the fire and gives them regeneration on the enemies, because it is a global card. You can change that with upgrades, but... So I want to deflect, get another card. And then we are going to put this on this guy, because he's the one we're focusing right now. Make him bleed. Uh, make him bleed more. Helping hand, I can give that to her so she draws an extra card. Defend myself, and then I'll put that on her. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So I can straight up just kill that front guy. He already went. So he, if I put him down, he's definitely going to die at the beginning of his turn. So now I can focus this guy back here. I am going to do, do the mana gym. Um, so I am going to give that to Reggie and then just start focusing this guy in the back. Yep, so he's dead. I will do the Holy Smite. I'm going to put that on him so I can see what he's playing. I will do this on Evelyn to remove the fire. And then I will just do damage. Oh, I can do this. Okay, well then I'll put that on Evelyn. Okay, I think we won right now. Yep. Excellent. Okay, so we got Impale. This is good. It chains. So it goes from whoever you put it on to the next person. Uh, this applies Cracked, which basically makes them take more blunt damage, which is what this card is doing. Um... Cleave is super good because it's all monsters, but it's so low damage for pretty pretty high energy. I think I'm going to take the Impale just because it applies bleed to two monsters, basically. Got the Burning Shot. Uh, not that good. Honestly, it does damage, fire damage depending on half your sharp. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of sharp right now. He just has the camouflage that gives him sharp. So I don't think that's really worth it. And it's only two. And I'd have to draw him right after another. The uh, sonnet here. This requires stanza. There's an entire character built around stanza. And basically it's like, you get stanza one at the start of your turn, then at the end of the turn, it turns into stanza two and then stanza three. And then depending on, you know, what card needs what, uh, th the cards that need higher stanza are really, really strong. This rapid fire is super good. I think I'll take that. It's a high cost card. And then it also tells you, if you click on their deck, it tells you how many cards of each you have. It's a high cost card, which I don't have a lot of, but it's repeats twice. So basically it's three shots at eight damage each to random monsters. And then also if I right click it, I can target the monster or I can make it so it applies bleed to them too. For her, I think I'm just going to take... Oh, that's basically just an ice fireball, right? I think I'll take that just to have a different uh, free... In case anybody's... <laughs> I was going to say allergic to fire, but... Uh, resistant to fire. Uh, so I will take this one. This Ray of Hope, because it's already upgraded. You can get already upgraded cards. And it costs one less. And it dispels darkness, it dispels insanity, which are all fucking 
crazy bullshit that we're probably not gonna do with. To be honest. Uh, altar rubble. The broken altar. You discover the rubble of an ancient altar. Those altars are used to make offerings with magic shards to improve your skills. It appears that the altar has been destroyed on purpose and perhaps those who did it are still nearby. This altar is barely usable and in order for the offering to work, you will need to offer an additional amount of shards. Using this altar current in under current condition will cost you a little more. So basically it's just like the altar in the town but you can just use it and it'll cost more you can try to repair it which i'm probably going to do or you can try to rebuild it entirely um uh, do not make an offering try to restore it to its former state this is really high i am going to go for this try to repair it oh good okay success you didn't exactly fix it, but now uh, with less rubble and rocks put together, it has a better presence. You get 10% discount and 40 XP. Cool. So now we can upgrade all our cards, but we have, uh, we get a 10% discount, 60, 54. Um, I think I'm going to take Reggie's flashes and make them free. Just because just for him to be dealing free damage is always good. Magnus. I want to intercept for more. No, not really. I can make defense free. So that would be good for him. Oh yeah, all the free defense. I think that's pretty good. Everyone everyone else has zero cost cards now. Yeah. Now we get to meet Heiner. The last sentinel. You arrive at a crumbling watchtower. This tower was the first point of defense in the wolf wars against the wild werewolves of the forest. When you enter the tower, your eyes catch a dim light that filters under the rubble. It's a golem! They were the best defenders has ever known. They were dismantled after the war and it was thought that there were no more left. The power supply seems to be damaged. Maybe if you can find a replacement for the core, you can repair it. It's up to you to repair it. So this basically gives us a task. It's, it's, we have to complete this in order to get the character. So what do we do? We want to take measurements of the core. You will search for a replacement. I fought alongside one. It'd be a good idea to repair it. My master told me how she learned to create these golems. They're really powerful. So basically, these are just kind of flavor text lines. So we'll be we'll be accepting the quest regardless. I'll just do Magnus's. And you get a little bit of backstory here. I remember how the queen assigned one of these to my group when we were fighting to take back the forest. It was a real battle machine and it helped us a lot. If I'm not mistaken, these golems originated from the Black Forge in the Velkarath Mountains. We should look there for any replacement cores. As you hide the golem so it does not suffer any more damage, you find a few magic shards. 400 shards, that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna call it there for the first episode. But I fucking love this game. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to be playing it on the channel, too, because because I've played the crap out of this game and I've always wanted to do like a, a kind of introduction to it, but never really found the time until now. But I'm super excited. I want Heiner so bad. <laughs> I think he's a great tank, but I will leave it for next time and I'll see you in the next one.